We come in Thanksgiving. Like I mentioned earlier, we today have come to the end of the first half of the year. Tomorrow we begin the other half. For the gift of life and for everything that we have, we come to thank the Lord. And I thank you all for coming, especially on a day like this when it is very warm outside. Some people would have done something else. Here you are, coming to the house of the Lord. As we come, we are reminded of human destiny, the very reason that God created us. God created humanity so that we will be with him in eternal happiness and eternal life in heaven. That was and still is his intention. But when sin came into the world, sin made an attempt to divert that intention. And as a result of sin, there is death in the world. There is pain there is suffering. In the Old Testament, earlier on, some people believed that if one lived a good life, and if one really believed in God, that he would have prosperity in this life, he would not suffer, he would have long life. There would be no pain or no illness. That was the belief earlier. But eventually, they started seeing some differences for example, in the life of Job, you know that holy, dedicated man, he suffered a lot of illnesses in his family, a lot of death. And so at the end of the, or toward the end of the Old Testament, precisely at the first century BC, the book of wisdom was written to address this issue of death and pain and suffering. That is a reading from where we just had our first reading today, when the book of wisdom addresses the issue of death and he addresses it in such a way to open our eyes to understand what type of death that the scripture is talking about and of course we know there are two types one is this physical death which the scripture compares to sleeping for example when Jesus in John's gospel chapter 11 went to see his friend Lazarus who had died for four days, he said to the sisters, he's only sleeping. Again, in today's gospel reading, as he visited the daughter of Jairus, who was already dead, he said to the people who were crying, she's only sleeping. So the first type of death is simply a sleep from which we would be awoken. That is a separation of the body and the soul. That is the first type of death. Separation of the body and the soul, the one that we would be awoken we know that because we know that humanity or man is a composite of two things. Number one, soul, and then the body. That is why the catechism tells us that human being is God's creature whom he made in his image that has body and soul. So there is going to come a time that my soul will be separated from my body. That is the physical death. It is also the separation, just a separation temporarily. After that separation, there is going to be eternal life when my body will be joined back to my soul in a beatific way so I can live with God in eternal life. The same thing is applicable to all of us. That is what God intended. But when sin came into the world, we come to understand the second part of death, spiritual death, which is the separation of the human being away from God. And sometimes people think that that happens when we die. No, it begins actually here when a human being refuses to be connected to his love and refuses to make that the concrete part of his life by the way he or she lives his life day by day. A separation from God is actually called death. In fact, Second Peter talks about it like a second death. And so once that happens in this world, when the person dies, maybe there is no refusal or there's no refusal because the person had already chosen where to go. People look into this and they solve the problem of evil in the world. If I'm a good man and a good woman, should there be pain? Should there be death in my own life? That is what the scripture is addressing today, reminding us of two types of death. He's actually talking about that second death. So the readings in part address the problem of evil, particularly the problem of death. How can a good God allow suffering and sometimes death to happen to the people he loves? Evil is not a direct creation of God. That is why the scripture says in today's first reading, God did not create death. 
Evil is a lack of good. That is, God intended one thing, but evil is the denier of what God intended. And that is as a result of sin. When once sin gets in, sin changes things the way God intended. To sin is to make a deliberate choice, therefore, against the good that God intended. And the result of such a choice is suffering and sometimes eternal death. But here is the good news. Faith in God through his son Jesus Christ delivers us from ultimate suffering, from ultimate death. And Jesus demonstrates that in the gospel when he showed that the daughter of Jerus was simply sleeping and then he awoken her to life, indicating that even in the suffering and pain of death, when we hold on to our faith, the Lord Jesus can bring us to new life in God. We also notice in the other part of the scripture, of course, there was another story there, given about the woman who suffered hemorrhage. If we read the longer portion of the reading, that woman who suffered, Jesus cured her of her own illnesses, indicating that faith from God saves us from too much suffering and ultimately saves us from death. When Jesus told the daughter of Jairus, little girl, arise, that is an indication of what will happen to me and to you after our bodies are separated from our souls temporarily while waiting for eternal life in heaven. We hear again and again that we need to believe in God, we need to have faith in him, and we need to trust him. When we do that, it doesn't mean that tough times and difficulties will not come. But by the power of God, we can overcome all those things, including the power of death, separating our bodies and the soul. We are all like the woman mentioned in the gospel or like the daughter of Jairus, disconnected from life, from community as a result of sin, selfishness, and things that we bring upon ourselves as a result of what the devil wants. But the important question is whether we really trust and believe that God can save us from these things, and then we can rely on the sacrament of his church. God did not create evil. Evil came about as a result of sin, refusing to accept what God offers. But when we in faith touch or allow Jesus to touch us, which is what happens every time at the sacrament, when he forgives our sins, when we receive him in the Eucharist, then Jesus heals us and put us one more time on the path of eternal life. God did not create human beings to suffer. He did not create us to die or to be separated from him. His intention is that we should join him in the midst of all the ups and downs of life, but that one day we will be with him in eternal life in heaven. Every time we come to Mass, every time we come to the Eucharist, every time we come to the sacrament, that is what Jesus offers that hope in eternal life as God intended.